Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to conclude the functional groups by focusing on amides. So an amide is a derivative of a carboxylic acid where the OH group of the carboxylic acid is substituted for a nitrogen. And so it's a carbonyl connected to a nitrogen that makes it an amide functional group. So that's the core structure of the amide. Now, let's talk about how we form amides. The name of this reaction is amidation, and that's to form amides, as the name implies, amidation for amide. The reaction involves a carboxylic acid and ammonia. And so we are going to be combining the OH from the acid and one of the hydrogens from the ammonia, and that's going to create water. And we're going to be connecting the carbonyl directly to the nitrogen. So we kick out water and we condense the other two molecules. So this is another type of condensation reaction. It's basically the same exact reaction as a sterification, except instead of an alcohol, it's an amine. So nitrogen instead of oxygen, but very similar to a sterification. Now, ammonia is NH3. If we used an amine where there was a carbon attached to the nitrogen, it's the same reaction. We're still kicking out water. The only difference is if there was a carbon attached there, well, there's still a carbon attached to the nitrogen. So you can do this with ammonia, NH3. You can do it with a primary amine, or you could even do it with a secondary amine. The only difference is whether or not you have carbons attached to the nitrogen in your amide. So let's do some practice problems. Predict the product of the following amidation reaction. Okay, so we have a carboxylic acid and we have an amine. To combine these, we have to kick out water. So that water is going to come from the OH and the H there. So that'll be our H2O byproduct. And then we're going to connect that portion with that portion. So it looks like we have a benzene ring, then our carbonyl, and then that's going to be connected directly to the nitrogen. And everything else is still there. So that's the amide that is formed from these two molecules. Let's do another one. Predict the product of the following amidation reaction. Carboxylic acid and a secondary amine. Same process, we're kicking out OH and H to make H2O. And what's remaining is going to get condensed together. The nitrogen will be connected directly to the carbonyl. And so we will have something that looks like that. The bond that we just formed is this bond right here. That's the amide bond. It's the new bond that we formed to connect these two pieces together. So we condensed them and kicked out water. So now that we've talked about how to form amides, let's talk about how to name them. And so naming amides uh, is similar to naming carboxylic acids, but we drop the oic acid and we add amide to the end. And if there is a carbon group attached to the nitrogen, we name it as a substituent using a capital N to denote that it's attached to the nitrogen. 
So in this example here, highlighted in pink is a four carbon chain. So this came from butanoic acid. So the name of the amide would be butanamide. And because there's two methyl groups attached to the nitrogen, it would be NN dimethyl butanamide. Let's do some practice. So give the name for the following amide. So this is going to be the parent here. That's carbon number one, two, three, and four. So four carbons is butte, but instead of butane, it's butan amide. And it looks like we have a methyl group attached to the nitrogen. So we would say N methyl butanamide. So the parent chain starts from the carbonyl and goes away from it. And then we add the ending amide. So butane becomes butanamide. And if there's a substituent on the nitrogen, it gets a capital N. Let's do a couple more. Name the following amides. So this one is nice and simple. It's got two carbons, no substituents. So two carbons is F, but instead of ethane, we drop the E and we make it ethan amide. The next one here, this is the parent and it looks like we have three carbons. So that would be propane amide. And coming off of the nitrogen, it looks like we have an ethyl group. So this would be N ethyl propanamide. So let's try drawing the structure based on the name. Draw the structures of the following N methyl pentanamide. So to break this down, we're going to start with the parent, as usual. So I see pentane. Pentane has five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. And amide means that it has to have that. And then I see that there's an N-methyl. So there's got to be a methyl group coming off of the nitrogen. And then nitrogen always makes three bonds. And so he already has two bonds, which means the third one has to be a hydrogen. So we'll add that hydrogen there. And so that's the structure of N-methyl pentanamide. All right, for the next one, it looks like the parent is benz, like benzene. And then we're gonna have the amide. So we have to have an amide coming off of it. So there's benzamide. And then two fluoro. So if we were to number the ring, You want to start with number one, where the amide is attached. And so at carbon two, there's a fluorine. So that would be two fluoro benzamide. Okay. So now that we've talked about how to form amides, we talked about how to name amides, let's talk about how to destroy amides. And so we can do hydrolysis reactions on amides just the same we did with esters. Okay. And so we can have hydrolysis in acidic conditions 
where we're using an acid. So if we take our amide, we're going to be cutting it between the carbonyl and the nitrogen. We're cutting the amide bond. Now, we're adding in water. And so we're going to be cutting the water as well. And one side is going to get the OH. And the other side is going to get the H. And so that's where that hydrogen came from there. Now, because amines act as bases, the acid that we used as a catalyst will end up combining with the amide. And so we'll end up forming the ammonium salt because this extra HCl is going to combine with our amine here. And so that HCl there ends up attaching to the nitrogen, forming the ammonium chloride salt. So cut the amide, you get back the carboxylic acid and the ammonium salt if you're in acidic conditions. Let's do a practice. Draw the products from the hydrolysis of N-methyl pentanamide with water and HBr. All right, so let's start by drawing our reactant here. Pentane means five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, and it's pentanamide. So there's my amide. And then there's an N-methyl, so a methyl group sticking off. Nitrogen always needs three bonds. So if two are currently drawn, that means it needs one more hydrogen. And so that's N-methyl pentanamide. We are reacting it with water and HBr is our catalyst. So we're going to be cutting the amide bond and we're going to be cutting the water. So our first product will be the carboxylic acid. And then we're going to be combining the free amine with that hydrogen. And so you'd end up with the amine. But because we have this extra acid floating around, from the catalyst, we have to take that into account. And so the lone pair on the nitrogen here is going to pick up that extra hydrogen. And so we'll end up with NH3 with a positive charge. And then the bromide will be attracted to it because it's negatively charged. So you have Br minus attracted to your NH3 plus. So this is my ammonium salt and my carboxylic acid. So that was acidic hydrolysis. We can also do base hydrolysis, similar to what we did with esters. So in base hydrolysis, we're using a strong base like sodium hydroxide, and we're still going to be cutting our amide. The only difference here, when we cut the amide, 
we don't have a water to go in. We have NaOH. So we're going to cut there. And we end up with the carboxylate salt. The carbonyl gets the O-N-A. And the amine gets the extra hydrogen there. So under basic conditions, you end up with a carboxylate salt and an amine. Whereas in acidic conditions, you ended up with the ammonium salt and the carboxylic acid. Let's do one more practice problem. Draw the products from the hydrolysis of N-methyl pentanamide with sodium hydroxide. So N-methyl pentanamide looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. N-methyl, and that needs one hydrogen. And we're reacting it with NaOH. So what's going to happen? We're going to cut the amide bond. And we're going to combine that with the ONA. So we get the carboxylate salt. And the other product we get is the amine picks up that hydrogen there. And so we'll have that amine. So under basic conditions, we get the amine and the carboxylate salt. Okay. So to recap, amides have a carbonyl with a nitrogen next to them. They are formed from amidation reactions of a carboxylic acid and an amine. We talked about how to name amides. And we talked about acid hydrolysis and base hydrolysis. And so this concludes all of our video series on the functional groups. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in lab on Tuesday.